Good morning. It's Friday. Today's show is brought to you by Rosenberg's and Visit Tillamook Coast. I have uh, Twyla Plummer here from Adventist Health, and on the line we have Dr. Michael Gardner, also from Adventist Health. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for having us part of your program today. I would like to introduce Dr. Michael Gardner. He is a non-invasive cardiologist who is a part of the Northwest Regional Heart and Vascular Team and is also part of our Adventist Health Telemec Cardiology Team along with uh, Dr. Chelsky. So both providers come up on an average about twice a week. And then we also have a device tech that comes to Adventist Health Telemec Medical Plaza once a month to help those patients that have pacemakers. We're very blessed to have Dr. Gardner with us with his experience. He works with patients across the range of heart disease, and he's chosen this field because heart disease is very common, but treatments are rapidly improving. He believes that he can help people to live longer, healthier lives through prevention and treatment. He earned his medical degree at the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences in Little Rock, Arkansas. He served his residency in internal medicine at OHSU in Portland. And then he went on to earn a fellowship in cardiology at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center in Pennsylvania. Dr. Uh, Gardner, what would you like to talk about today? <laughs> I was just going to say, well, I don't think you have anything else to say because Twyla just read us your whole biography. <laughs> yes. Thanks. Uh, what kind of coffee do you drink and uh, do you like long walks on the beach? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, thank you for the kind introduction. I appreciate you uh, both having me on today and looking forward to talking about all the things we're doing at Adventist in cardiology. And I appreciate the uh, very nice introduction. So uh, Adventist Health has, um, you're, you obviously work, uh, well, I shouldn't say obviously, but because I know this, but you're, you actually work out of Portland, is that correct? That is correct. I Yeah, so I spend uh, probably about 70% of the time in Portland and then the other 25 to 30% of the time in, in Tillamook. And um, yeah, so we work in both places, which actually makes it a nice opportunity that when patients um, need care that extends outside of Tillamook for advanced therapies, I can coordinate and work with my partners who work in Portland and make sure that care gets coordinated appropriately and timely for um, people seeing me in Tillamook. So it is a nice opportunity to work in both places and make sure uh, appropriate uh, heart care gets coordinated for people. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think it's a it's great that Adventist Health here locally and also the network in Portland have a partnership. I mean, obviously you guys are all the same company, but that there's a partnership there where folks don't have to travel over the hill. <coughs> Excuse me, if they need to see a cardiologist um, because the cardiologist comes out here. Yeah, absolutely, and that's one of that's one of the great things is by. Um, being able to come out there between the two of us, an average of about twice a week. Oh, wow. Um, it it, it uh, helps provide a lot of care that can be provided just in Tillamook, and then people don't have to come all the way to Portland or another city to get care that we can provide out there mm-hmm. closer to home, especially because, um, as we know, with the weather this week sometimes and just traveling, it can be very difficult to try yeah. and travel such distances for care that we can provide out there. So it is it is really nice to um, be able to provide that care out there and not make people have to drive so far for sure. care we can provide there. Well, and, and also staying within the network of Adventist Health. So, you know, you're getting the same company. You're not having to transfer medical records or things like that. So, which I, sh- I assume also for patient access probably makes that pretty easy in that sense. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. And by being all in the same uh, organization, Mm -hmm. uh, we know what care has been provided both if in Tillamook and in Portland. So as I said, the coordination of care um, is much smoother than transitioning between health systems or um, if it was a different organization. So it does it does make uh, the transitions very smooth and and it makes it much easier. Mm -hmm. So the month of February, which is flying at us very quickly, um, is American Health Month, sometimes called Heart Health Month. And so I think that's one of the parts of the conversation today is to talk about what makes a a healthy heart, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, I think 
raising awareness about heart disease, which has already, I think, is already well raised among most people in public, but I think continuing to have that discussion is important since it is the number one disease that affects people in the United States and continues to be that way. And while we've made great strides on things we can do to try and prevent heart disease and all that, it, it still continues to impact so many people. And that's one of the reasons why I got involved in cardiology and continue to find it important to raise awareness because that's how people find out about these diseases and mm -hmm. we can help take care of them before they become a major issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what are some preventative measures that people can implement in their life uh, to have, to, to maintain heart health and to also um, increase their heart health, I guess? Yeah. Yeah. So there's a couple things. I think, I think, one of the things I always emphasize is, is, is twofold. One is we always talk about movement. I think most people use the word exercise all, mm -hmm. all the time in talking about that. But I really emphasize to people it's really about movement. And even if it's not, uh, people have different visions of what exercise is. Sure. You know, we sometimes think it's like having to run a marathon or something. But it's really not that. You know, as long as you're, you know, doing walking or getting your body moving or doing something like that, we tend to recommend about 30 minutes, you know, three to five times a week. That really helps with heart health. It helps with blood pressure. It helps with many of these things that um, help prevent diseases. And so that's, that's area number one we talk, I talk with patients about a lot. The second thing is, is um, eating healthy and trying to eat healthy. And, and that, that's uh, more complicated because there's unfortunately a lot of things that are out in in our society that we can get a hold of that aren't always the healthiest thing. Sure. Um, but and and what works well for some people as far as healthy nutrition may not be feasible for other people too, which is also another thing. So, but generally, at talking in generics, I try to emphasize making sure people are eating fruits and vegetables, trying to eat healthy proteins like fish and things like that, and and trying to avoid too much fried or processed food as mm -hmm. a general, which, which can be hard. And so that's why those are some of the many things I talk about um, before even talking about, you know, medications or things like that. Because uh, I try to emphasize that trying to prevent heart disease and doing some of these things that we can do without taking pills is the best way to do it if we can do it that way without having to use medication. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, and I appreciate that. I think that's a great uh, perspective and um, is important because I, we, I get a lot of people in here. At the Health Center comes on, Adventist Health comes on, Tillamook County Wellness comes on, and we talk about um, – chronic disease and diabetes and things like that. And, and so much of the conversation is around lifestyle changes versus, uh, oh, well, here's a pill that'll fix that, which I, maybe, but also a lot of those things can be tackled just with a lifestyle change. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, I think one of the things too, when I talk with people about lifestyle changes, I think the other thing is, which is really important is trying to find things that are sustainable as far as lifestyle mm -hmm. changes, because I think one of the challenges is, is I think many of us can, can get focused enough to make a change for a week or two or things like that, but trying to find things that are feasible for the long term sure. and not just for the short term. Um, and so that's why I, when I talk with people is trying to figure out what are sustainable long-term changes that are going to lead to good health, because um, you know, if you just change something for a week or two, or even if it's for like a month, um, that can help. But if you can't, if it's not something that can be sustained, then right. that it, you're kind of back to square one after mm -hmm. a week or two or a month. So, which is challenging. That's one yeah. of the things we talk about. Yeah. And it also, I think when you try something new and you have a hard time sticking to it, it's a little bit of a demotivator, which then makes changes in the future a little bit harder. You, you know, we tend to beat ourselves up um, over things like that. And so the health center was actually on recently talking kind of about goals and how to like basically lean into small little goals. If you want to go, maybe your goal is to run a mile. 
start with just walking a little bit and even inside, if you need to walk around your house, you know, and keeping that and working your way into it, finding those small little victories that add up to a larger, more sustained victory and goal. Absolutely. And I think that's a a great motto mentality and something I try to talk with people as well too, that the short, uh, the, what seems like a small goal um, shouldn't be overlooked as something that is still valuable and really mm-hmm. important and important change. Mm-hmm. So. Do you have some statistics uh, around heart disease and heart health? And can you also, sorry, I'm going to throw a couple questions at you. What, what is included in heart disease? The, like that phrase, you can answer either one first. I don't care. Yeah. So I'll take, I'll, I'll start with the second one first. Um, so heart disease is, is definitely an umbrella term, so I'm glad you asked about that. Uh, things that most commonly, heart disease encompasses a lot of different diseases, but I think the most common diseases we see that people have with heart disease um, are things like what we call heart artery disease or coronary artery disease, which can lead to heart attacks, which people um, commonly hear about. Mm-hmm. The other the other thing would be abnormal heart rhythms or arrhythmias, we call them. And then probably the third most common we see is something called heart failure, which is where the pumping function of the heart doesn't work as well to supply enough blood to the body. To the body. Because to keep it kind of simple, the heart is a pump and its job is to supply blood to the rest of the body. So when that doesn't, when that pumping function doesn't work as well, that's when people get heart failure. Those are the three most common diseases we see that are under the umbrella term heart disease. But there are many other diseases too. That's kind of a long list to go through. As far as statistics of heart disease, I, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but uh, I do know that, like I said, heart disease continues to be the number one cause of death, hospitalization in the United States. Um, and it's something that typically affects many people. And, and it can affect all ranges of people, especially when you start talking about all kinds of heart disease. I mean, we typically think of heart disease as something that occurs as you kind of build it up over age and as we get wiser, as I say, over time. Mm-hmm. Um, but but you know, it can, it, it's something too that can impact younger people as well. And so that's why I think um, it is something that most people know somebody who has been impacted by heart disease. And the good part is with heart disease is there are a lot of um, very successful treatments that help with many of these different conditions. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are, are there screenings to know if you, like, are there some, I know we have, you know, breast cancer screenings and uh, colonoscopies and things like that that are recommended at certain, starting at certain ages. Are there screenings for the heart that are recommended on a periodic basis? Yeah. So I think the two most important screening uh, tests or things you can do that are helpful to know, especially if you have family members or people, you know, are are closely related to you with heart disease, the two important things to know would be your blood pressure, because blood pressure, if it's not well controlled over time, you may, you may not have any symptoms or notice that your blood pressure is not well controlled, but it can lead to issues down the road. So that's Mm -hmm. one of the things which, you know, that can be checked easily. You can go to your Walgreens or any kind or CVS or whatever pharmacy or, or, you know, um, Fred Meyer, and and most places will have a blood pressure cuff or somewhere you can get your blood pressure checked if that's something you want to have checked. Um, The other numbers in in certain people especially, we typically talk about having your cholesterol checked, particularly once you reach age 40, but even younger than that, depending on if you have family members who have problems with cholesterol, is checking uh, cholesterol panels or lipid panels, we call it, which look at the different levels of cholesterol in the body. And that's the other screening thing that can be helpful to know what your numbers are, because making sure those numbers are under good control will help prevent things like heart attack, things like stroke, things things like other kinds of heart diseases that can lead to abnormal heart rhythms and, and all those kinds of mm-hmm. things. So those are probably the two most important screening tests that I would say you um, should be aware of 
and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I mean, I get my blood pressure taken when I go to the dentist office now, like they because you're laying down. And so, I mean, that's a new thing that like in the last 10 years, maybe. Um, but interesting that you talked about the cholesterol and I can't remember who it was. I do feel like it was somebody from the hospital, but they were actually talking about, uh, childhood cholesterol screenings because sometimes cholesterol can be hered- hereditary, genetic. Do you know what yep. I'm talking about? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. No, you're totally right. So, so some people can have very elevated cholesterol as, um, a genetic basis and it's hereditary and it runs in families. Mm-hmm. And so that's one of the reasons I said there are, there are indications for getting your cholesterol checked younger than the age of 40. If you, if you know you have family members who have really high cholesterol or things like that. So there are certain conditions where we do check people's cholesterol younger than the age of 40. Um, and so, so it is, it is something that does occur. And that's why, especially in families where, people have had, you know, heart attacks young or known very high cholesterol, Mm -hmm. it it is important to keep an eye on those things because it can impact people very young too and not just people, um, you know, who are older as well. Mm -hmm. So that's why, and and one of, especially once, like I said, you reach the age of 40, it is important to know what your cholesterol numbers are. Um, and, And most, and many people, not all people, but there are a lot of people who have already gotten their cholesterol checked for other reasons by the time right. they reach age 40. So, so um, it is definitely important. And there's a lot of um, uh, marketing, you know, with, with the American Heart Association and some of these associations and about knowing your numbers of your cholesterol and that it's really important because that is one of the things that can be uh, managed through exercise, diet, and trying to help um, – prevent some of these heart diseases down the road. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are some, are there some symptoms or warning signs that people should be aware of if uh, maybe they're starting to have an issue with their heart? Yeah. So the most common issues that or symptoms that people get when they're having issues with their heart tend to be still chest pain and shortness of breath. And mm-hmm. I tell people on the shortness of breath thing, you know, if you're if you're just making a change, like you're all of a sudden doing more exercise, or you're you're gonna get short of breath if you exercise significantly enough. You know, we all mm-hmm. do. Everyone sure. does. Even like Olympic athletes can get short of breath. But what I tell people is, is if it's a noticeable change of shortness of breath, where you do something that would have been routine for you, like no issues at all, like a week or two ago, that all of a sudden that's a big change. Mm-hmm. And I say. That's 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 when you should stop and take notice and be and be like this wasn't that hard for me a week ago and now I can't even do this without getting sure about those are the kind of things that are probably the two most common warning signs of some kind of heart disease or, or cardiac process that could be going on. Mhm, mhm. Yeah, and I think those are two. Um, I people that's usually what's talked about and so it's a good reminder i'm going to take a quick break for our sponsors where do you go to find almost anything you need for home improvement i'll tell you where rosenberg's rosenberg's has been your local connection for anything you need to build and finish your house to perfection carpet cabinets paint electrical plumbing nuts and bolts fencing windows doors and so much more all those items in one place but that's only part of the story what really makes rosenberg's your stop for home improvement is their people they're knowledgeable friendly staff is there to help you through any project any question from what paint you should use to how to install a new shower valve you can get the help you need to do it right the first time stop by rosenberg's today to rediscover what you've known all along it's better to shop local and work with great people you can see every day build it plumb it wire it paint it rosenberg builder supply tillamook The Tillamook Coast Visitors Association is a partner in destination management, helping support community livability, natural resources stewardship, and business vitality. They communicate to visitors what's important to our community and work with the community to help provide the support they need to manage visitors. Stories are told in local voices focusing on stewardship, local foods, cultural heritage, and outdoor recreation. Tourism business owners and their employees want what you want, to enjoy the economic benefits of tourism while maintaining our communities as great places to live. Find out more at TillamookCoast.com. 
I'm talking with Twyla Plummer and Dr. Michael Gardner from Adventist Health Tillamook this morning. Uh, Twyla, the uh, Art for the Heart is coming up in February at the NCR. Is that right? Did I say that yeah, right? Yeah, the NCR. Pop goes the heart? No, Art goes the heart. Art for the heart? Art for the <laughs> what heart. Is it? <laughs> It's art for the heart, and yes, you are right on so many elements there. We So we actually have our drop-off on Sunday, January 28th from 10 to 3 at the NCRD. That's for any artists that want to be part of that event. Now, do people have to tell you that they're bringing it, or can they just bring their heart art? So it's easiest if we are to kind of have kind of a little mm-hmm. bit of a heads up, and uh, Anna McLean has been phenomenal of that with Adventist Health, um, her uh, email um, is out there. We've had things go out in the um, Headlight Herald, um, also North Coast Citizen and other venues. We have flyers all over town, mm-hmm. um, also at the schools as well. But you can bring your art that day to the NCRD. Um, something important to note is that it must be ready to hang. Gotcha. Yes. So and are you only taking hanging art, or are there opportunities for, like, sculptures that people do that? Yes. Okay. Yes. There are sculptures that have been um, shown, and then also jewelry has been oh, cool. um, uh, part Displayed. of the event as mm-hmm. well. Yes. And, again, just someplace that we can uh, present it, hang it. Uh, we've had lots of photography, uh, cloth art with wool. Uh, lots of things with driftwood. Some amazing mm, sure. photography and painting. Mm-hmm. Just Every um, every median is welcome. Mm-hmm. So it could be, you know, charcoal. And then we also um, like to have things from students and children. So we have a special youth award as well. And just some fun history about um, Art for the Heart is that it started in 2014. And oh, so this is the 14 or 10, 14 yeah, year. <laughs> I can yeah. do math. <laughs> 10 year anniversary. It Mm -hmm. is. We only had to take a little bit of a hiatus during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, But yes, we're very, very excited about that. NCRD has just been phenomenal in their support because we show the um, exhibit the entire month Mm -hmm. to promote um, heart health. And then we do have also a reception on Sunday, February 4th from 1 to 3 at the NCRD. And that gives um, the community members anyone to vote on Best of Show, People's Choice, and a Youth Award. And we do have... um, cash prices Ooh. for those yes mm-hmm. oh first place is five hundred dollars second place 250 third place 175 and the wow. youth award is 250 so there's some there's some good stuff there artists also have the ability to sell their art uh-huh. um if they do 10 percent of the proceeds go to the ncrd for their programs the artist gets the rest adventist health makes no money from this event okay. we're just happy to showcase the art um, bring heart health into more um, public awareness. And then also another fun thing is that on uh, February 2nd, that's National Wear Red Day. I wrote that down. Yes, yes. I saw right? that. I Googled art or uh, Heart Health Month, and that was one of the things that popped up is February 2nd is Wear Red Day in recognition of Heart Health Month. I know. It's going to be so much fun. And then we also have at that reception, we have a classical guitarist, Ivan Danilich, will be playing again. He's just fantastic. And we have food this year um, being supplied by the Beach Bake Shop from Rockaway. Oh, nice. Yeah, so there will be some fun treats there and lots of good stuff. So if you have the opportunity, come and check it out. There is no cost to see the exhibit. And it's um, available the whole, entire month of February mm-hmm regular operating hours of the NCRD. Yes. Which, by the way, it's a leap year, so there's an extra day in February. It'll be February 1st through February 29th. Um, Yeah, and the NCRD, their little art gallery is so cute and bright and light-filled, and so I'm sure that's really fun to have all those heart things in there. It is one year. We actually had some beautiful stained glass artwork oh, awesome. displayed, and we were able to utilize the windows that mm-hmm. brought in that natural light. Very cool. Yeah, it was yeah. very cool. It just kind of showed everything. It was yeah. just, it was phenomenal. Um, you can find info. I, I Googled it. Art for the Heart and CRD is what I typed in, and it, it popped right up um, because the URL is very long. AdventistHealth.org. Slash news slash call to artists for annual art for the heart showcase. Yes. <laughs> so just Google it. Um, very cool. And I, I love that you're kind of curating an art show and the Adventist Health gets nothing out of it. It's going back to the artists and back to the community. So that's really cool. Correct. And is it free to for people to be able to put their art in? Yes, it is. Oh, awesome. Yep. Um, I did want to say, I because I found your, obviously, the page on here. Um 
Digital work has, has to be printed and wall ready. Hanging art must be wall ready. And freestanding art is welcome, but must be accompanied by a stand or holder that will securely hold them in place. So just know if you are doing that to have those things. Um, can you, I know in the past Adventist health has had classes like, um, Oh gosh, maybe diabetes classes or something like that. Are there any of those going on right now? Do you know what I'm talking? I was trying to find do, on the website yes, and I yes. couldn't so find anything. Yes, so we do have a new dietitian at the hospital mm -hmm. who will be soon starting classes oh, like that for the community. Uh, same with Dr. Douglas in the mm -hmm. in the past. Um, did some classes as well. Our care coordinators, our RN care coordinators, do in clinic and in home diabetic and hypertension education. So definitely that blood pressure control, diabetes control. Sure. So we have that available. And then just like Dr. Gardner was mentioning, you can also come to any of our clinics for a blood mm -hmm. pressure check, no fee, um, any day of the week. And we're happy to do that for you. And then also, you know, get you in contact with a provider if you need one, mm -hmm. if that happens to be elevated or you have more questions. Sure. But coming soon, yeah, we'll have more classes in the community about um, healthy lifestyles, um, nutritional classes. Mm -hmm. And education. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and I think those class settings, I know the YMCA does some, Tillamook County Wellness does some. I think those are great opportunities for people to make some of those lifestyle changes with a group of people. You know, you start to make connections with people and then they become your advocate and you become their advocate. And it's just easier. It seems to be easier to go through and make changes of, in your life when you have somebody that's going down the same path as you that you can talk to and kind of bounce ideas off of and that can encourage each other. Just, Agreed. Yeah, makes it a little bit yeah, easier. That support system is huge. And if mm -hmm. you don't have one, we can help you find one. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, speaking of that, by the way, you were talking, um, Dr. Gardner, about just getting out physical activity. Tillamook County Wellness has several walking groups that are available. Um, I think there's less during the winter than there is in the summer just because of the weather. But I know I see a walking group that leaves the YMCA every Wednesday at 11 o'clock. They might be there other days as well. I only see them on Wednesdays. Um, and when it's raining out, they just walk the track at the Y. When it's like torrential raining, if it's just drizzling, they're fine outside. <laughs> but um, also another great way to get some physical activity, make new friends, make some new connections, have some accountability and all of that. So... Yeah, there's lots of resources out there for sure. Uh, we're just about out of time. Dr. Gardner, do you, is there anything else you want to mention um, or let people know about? I don't think there's anything else in particular. I think I'm very excited about all of the opportunities that people have in the community to continue um, trying to help with their heart health through exercise and eating healthy and all those things. And that's what I would continue to emphasize is, the most important things to trying to help prevent not just heart disease, but other diseases as well. And i um, excited that Tillamook uh, has taken such a forefront role in recognizing those things as important to help the people in the community. And uh, we continue to be uh, very excited about the opportunity to help people in the community as well. Too. Awesome. Great. Uh, well, thanks for joining this morning. Absolutely. And Thank Twyla. you for having Thank me. You. Appreciate it. Here are my reminders for this weekend. The 